Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Tyco Mantua 040 Southern Pacific Steam Locomotive. This was sent in a while back from a viewer named Adam. It uh, used to belong to his father, and it apparently has not run in 50 years. So this thing has been sitting for uh, quite a long time, and uh, when we got it in here, I did test it out, and it didn't seem to run, so uh, there could be a variety of reasons of why it's not doing that. But in any case, I have pretty high hopes for it. Uh, this is a vintage model, as you can see. It's actually made in America, and uh, the, the box artwork uh, on it is just fantastic. They really had uh, such a way of uh, styling this stuff. I don't think this was the original box for this particular uh, locomotive, but um, in any case, it's a nice box, and it would have been something similar that this would have been uh, stocked in. Anyway, here's the uh, locomotive. Uh, these 040s are, are pretty simple, so, you know, there's no guarantees we'll get this thing running, but uh, I think this thing uh, actually has not had that many miles put on it, and uh, there are a whole variety of things that could be preventing it from running. You know, if a model's been sitting for a while, things can oxidize, and you can see a little bit of that right there. Uh, the wheels are pretty oxidized, and uh, the commutator on the motor is likely oxidized as well, so uh, we'll be looking in all those places. But uh, yeah, if, uh, if we're lucky, we'll get this thing uh, riding the rails once again. Could be a very nice little runner. Anyway, let's begin. I'm going to uh, take it over the track and uh, just show what it's doing right now so uh, you can all see uh, kind of what we're working with. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So we're just going to set this thing up on the track. I don't think it did uh, anything last time we did that, but I just want to set it up for kicks just so you can all see what we're uh, working with here. And uh, if we give it a little bit of power, uh, we'll see if it will do anything. Um, hmm. Not sure if you can all hear that, but it actually is making a tiny bit of sound. It sounds like the motor is it's making a bit of noise. Do you hear that? It's a very faint sound, but uh, it actually is making a little bit of noise. So uh, that's something new. I don't know uh, what exactly that is, but uh, in any case, we'll uh, bring it over to the workbench, crack it open, and see if it will uh, do anything when we give it power directly to the motor, or at least clean it up a bit first. I don't know. Let's uh, take it over to the workbench. So we're now going to begin disassembling this locomotive. These little 040s tend to not be too difficult to work on. Uh, basically, uh, on the bottom here, you got these uh, two uh, screw heads right here. Uh, these hold on a plate for the bearings. We might open uh, that up later to add some oil, but uh, we'll leave it alone for now. Uh, this one here in the middle holds the motor in place, and usually uh, there's a screw right here which holds the uh, chassis to the boiler. So if we undo this, the model should come apart. I'll just use the flat heads here, pull that out, and uh, hmm, doesn't seem to want to come apart. Oh, there we go. Okay, I see what was going on. Uh, these clips on the bottom here hold it on, so you just need to slide it forward kind of a, a little bit. Uh, anyway, we are now inside the model here, and uh, well, we can see right there it's not seized just by turning it manually, so that's good. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, it wasn't running, so uh, there must be something up. Don't know why that's there. Um, yeah, we could probably just connect some uh, leads from a controller to the motor here, see if it fires up, and then uh, we'll just clean all the connections and we might be in business. Okay, so I got our controller all hooked up. We'll do a little uh, spark test there so we know that there's power, in fact, in these wires. This could be the very first time this motor has started since about 1969, so this is kind of interesting here. Let's give it some power. Oh, look, it only moved a little. Let's try that again. This thing wants to go. Here, I'm going to try to kind of pick it up so the wheels can turn uh, freely. Yep, it's trying to go. Doesn't sound so great. Well, yeah, uh, 50 years will do that without oil. I accidentally took that off. Um, so we just need to uh, really just clean this whole thing up and uh, oil it, and I think it'll be good. That motor uh, started up pretty much on the first try. I thought I was going to have to turn it manually, but yeah, kind of a testament to just how tough these things were. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to uh, get these uh, pieces back in here, and then we'll uh, and then we'll start working on it. So 
So with that all back together, we're going to do some work on the motor. We're going to start by uh, removing one of the brushes, and this is pretty easy to do. You just lift that wire, and uh, the brush should just kind of pop out. Sometimes you have to kind of uh, wiggle these things around a little bit, kind of uh, back and forth. You just have to be gentle with it, and uh, it should uh, pop out. Anyway, uh, now that we are in here, we can have a quick look at the commutator. We're going to uh, clean that up with this uh, fiberglass pencil. A lot of people ask me where you can get these things. You can find them pretty easily on uh, Amazon and eBay and stuff. I'm sure there are a whole bunch of other places you can buy these. I might put a, a, uh, a link in the description where you can get one, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, uh, we're going to use uh, this one right here just to uh, clean up the commutator. Um, this commutator doesn't actually look too dirty, but uh, this will remove any oxidization which may be on it. In fact, it is polishing it up a tiny bit. So uh, there is, I guess, a thin layer of oxidization which this is taking care of. So that's good news. Uh, and then once we're finished this, we will uh, move on to actually cleaning out the, uh, the little gaps. All right, so we got that all cleaned up and you can see it's looking pretty shiny. We're now going to uh, clean out the little gaps on the commutator. This is something that's super important uh, on any HO scale locomotive you work on, especially really kind of old models that have a lot of miles on them. Uh, this one doesn't seem too bad actually. In fact, I don't really think this had any miles really put on it, so these are almost spotless. Um, but in any case, uh, you just want to take like a toothpick or something, something small which can fit between the gaps, and uh, you just want to clean these out. Because uh, on locomotives that have covered, uh, you know, a lot of distance and, you know, they've been uh, worked quite hard, um, these will get dirty, you know, little bits of the brushes will go in there. And if enough stuff gets in there, I take back actually what I said, this thing definitely was uh, doing some work. Because uh, you can see it's uh, there is some stuff coming out. Uh, anyway, what will happen is that... Um, these will fill up with carbon and they'll start to short and this can start to burn. So on older engines, you have a really strong kind of like uh, ozone smell. This is usually the, uh, the source and it's just because things burn in here. And if you're not careful, uh, you can actually uh, burn this part out, you know, because uh, you, you, you will slowly destroy the commutator if this gets too hot. And uh, yeah, the other thing that's not good about it is it just means your locomotive won't perform as well and it will put a ton of strain on your controller. So keeping these little gaps clean is a great way to uh, maintain your older locomotives. Anyway, now that we got that all back together, um, we'll just uh, put the brush back up here and uh, kind of move the spring back around it. You can clean off the brushes, and that's something I'd recommend doing, especially if you've got really oily brushes. But the truth is there's a bit of friction here, so that will kind of, if there's a tiny bit of anything on the brushes, um, these brushes don't seem too dirty. It will kind of clean them off. So it should be okay. Um, yeah, now uh, we can start kind of oiling the model. To uh, oil your motor, you want to uh, get this bearing right here. You can go in from this side but it's something you have to be very careful about because you don't want to get oil on your commutator i know people who do oil their commutators and um you know maybe it works but in my experience it, it just doesn't end well uh, if you do decide to put oil on your commutator though use a very minimal amount because i see uh, i've opened some models where people have put a ton of lubricant on their commutators and uh, there's so much heat and friction there, it really just doesn't take long for the oil to start burning and it becomes very sticky, which is not good. Also, be sure to use a conductive lubricant, otherwise uh, you're not going to be helping your cause. Anyway, uh, that's oiled now, so that should be pretty good. Uh, I've got both the bearings. We're going to put a mixture of uh, grease and oil on uh, this piece right here, the worm gear. Uh, it just needs a bit of a thicker lubricant to work properly, and then we'll oil all the other uh, pieces and what have you. So we're just going to put a little bit of grease on here. Um, you don't need too much in this case because uh, these are both, um, they might be nylon parts or plastic parts. Uh, in any case, metal parts need a thicker lubricant. There's just more friction there. Plastic parts actually uh, don't produce a crazy amount of friction. So as a result, they don't need as thick an oil. They definitely do need an oil. I've seen models where uh, the uh, worm gear has actually uh, become very stripped out because it hasn't been lubricated. Um, but provided you just give these things a, a decent amount of oil and a little bit of grease, uh, for the most part, they'll be all right. 
so uh, anyway, that's all taken care of. We can now start lubricating other parts of the model. I did mention uh, this plate right here. We'll lift that up and add some oils. And we'll just lift that off. Um, it does look like uh, some lubricants were definitely put in these bearings at one point. Uh, so I'm actually going to get a little bit of alcohol and just clean that out. You know, if, the, if I open one of these up and it looks kind of shiny and stuff, I'll usually just add uh, oil. But if you see uh, bearings like this, which look a little bit dirty, you want to remove the old lubricant before you go adding fresh stuff. Uh, I mean, it's not the end of the world if you do it. It's just not going to perform as well. So we're just going to take those wheels off and take off all those old lubricants and everything else that's on there. I'm just using uh, rubbing alcohol in um, extreme cases where you've got really old dried lubricants on parts. You could use dish soap and uh, warm water, but I find alcohol just for a little electrical contacts usually uh, works best. You know, it just it evaporates pretty quick and it uh, helps break down the oils. So you can see it has made that. It appears to be a little cleaner now, and uh, unfortunately I took out the drivers again, but whatever. Um, anyway, we'll uh, get these all cleaned out. Probably actually, after you get the oils out, use a fiberglass um, pencil. Uh, this might be oxidization. I, I can't entirely tell, but something just... This, this should be shiny brass. That should be shiny too, so definitely some stuff we want to uh, correct. All right, well, I'm about satisfied with how that's looking, so we're going to reassemble this. So we'll uh, put that back in place, as well as the other uh, couple bearings. Got to make sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it matters which side uh, they go in. They might be identical. I, I don't know, to be honest with all of you. Anyway, um, we'll put, uh, put these wheels back in. Uh, this is just something I would thought I'd point out. I, the uh, wheel where the driver connects is on the back. Um, when I was newer to fixing these things, I don't know why, but I always, for some reason, would put it the other way, um, which obviously uh, you can't do on all models, but I don't know. It's just something that uh, I always found a little bit confusing. Anyway, we're going to uh, get this back in place. And you just roll it into place because the drivers obviously uh, cause there to be a certain distance. We're going to add some oil. This is conductive lubricant. It's a fairly light oil. Um, but the wonderful thing is, you know, not only will this lubricate, but it will actually improve how well this model picks up power. So, uh, yeah, it does two jobs. It makes the model better both ways. I already cleaned off this plate with some uh, rubbing alcohol. It came out looking a little bit better. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I believe it goes like this. So we'll just put that there. And drop in our... Uh, screws and there we go wonderful that all seems pretty good make sure the bearings are all sitting properly all right, so I think that's about everything we have to do on the model, at least on the inside. So uh, all I have to do now is get this whole apparatus back together again. This can be a, a bit of a pain in the neck, but eh, you keep working at it. You'll get it. Okay, that seems decent. I think this is loose enough. This is not perfectly straight right here, but I th don't think it's going to interfere with it. So uh, yeah, we can put the uh, roof back on. I'll put this uh, forward a bit, keeping in mind that those uh, two tabs have to slide in on the back. And then, uh, where'd our long screw go? Okay, it turned out. I just put it off to uh, the side. So we'll just uh, screw that back in. Sometimes when you're putting in these screws, it won't uh, line up perfectly. Just wiggle this around until it kind of all uh, fits together. So, uh, yeah, that's not looking too bad. Uh, there are some other things we should oil, though. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that the drivers all have a little bit of oil. You want to make sure uh, the pieces for the uh, pistons are all good. Lubricate uh, these pieces here. And uh, repeat the process on the other side. All these bits just need a little bit of oil. It's not a crazy amount. 
but um, it just helps everything move a little better. And uh, we'll put some conductor lubricant right here. There's a tiny bit of friction, but more importantly, it should help the uh, electricity flow there. And uh, while we're doing this, we'll get the bearings on the tender because uh, on the Tyco Manua engines, the tender is required for electrical pickup. So you want to make sure those are all oiled and they're turning fine. So that's good. And uh, yeah, now we're just going to get rid of the oxidization with once again, our fiberglass pencil. And uh, this may take a while, but I'll let you know when I have it done. All right, we got those wheels looking a lot shinier. And uh, to do the front ones, we're going to make our lives a lot easier. And we're just going to uh, connect a wire up to uh, the uh, back wheel on one of the uh, trucks for the tender. And uh, we'll just hold that there. And then we connect this to the ground. And uh, okay, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. This should have started when I uh, gave it some power, but uh, evidently it's not. So I guess we have an electrical problem of some sort. Uh, that's unfortunate. I didn't notice any break in the solder joint, but uh, heck, who knows? Yeah, that wire looks fine. Or maybe not. Yeah, that looks really oxidized. I didn't realize that. I thought it was soldered, but mm, I don't think that power is going to be able to get through there. I don't recall encountering this before where a wire's just been held on with a little bit of pressure. Usually these things are uh, soldered, but um, that's just become so oxidized over the years. I don't think power can flow through it. So we're going to strip this off and we're going to solder it maybe to the brush top i don't know uh we could solder it to this this would probably the spring would probably be the best thing to solder it to i'd imagine um yeah i think we'll solder it to the spring that should work stripping wires with scissors here on smt mainline so the trick is just to wait until, until you feel the the wire and you just go very gently around and then when you know you got it you just pull up there you go. Look, a perfectly stripped wire. It's not the best way to do it, but it works. If you know kind of what you're doing. Anyway, let's uh, solder that on there. We'll get some uh, flux here and just put a little bit on there. And uh, that will just help us. It will help the solder flow. And uh, we then take our uh, unleaded solder and our soldering iron here. And we'll just uh, work a little bit on there. I just want to tin your wires up a little. It, it just really makes uh, putting these things together a lot easier. And this should go pretty easily too. And then, uh, well, here's the fun part. Just making these two pieces one. Well, it's not a great A job, but it will do it. So as I was saying about cleaning up wheels, um, we just connect a wire to uh, the ground, which is this entire piece of metal here. And then you just kind of get a, another piece of metal somewhere on the ground on the other side. And uh, provided you get it right, the model will just power itself. And uh, then you just get your uh, cleaning tool and uh, let the model uh, do the work for you. Well, those wheels are looking pretty shiny, if I do say so myself. I think this thing is ready to head over to the track for a test run. Let's see if our efforts have paid off, why don't we? Okay, moment of truth. Let's get this all set up. I think that's good. Let's give her some power. Yeah, okay, there's eight volts in the track. It's not doing anything. Oh, here's something. That's really weird. Oh, there we go. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, so it's derailed a little bit. Let's see if we can get it uh, get started though. I don't know why it's having so much trouble here. Oh, 
Yes, there we go. Wonderful. We've got a runner. I think it's struggling a little bit. I mean, this thing hasn't run in 50 years. There are things that just need to sort themselves out, but if we let this thing run around, I think it'll be doing just fine in a couple minutes. All right, well, it's about five minutes later of letting it break in, and it's uh, running pretty consistently at 12 volts. I even hooked up a little train to it uh, just so it could actually uh, break in under load. And uh, it's doing pretty well. It has a few little hiccups in some parts of the track, but uh, there's areas like that uh, frog right there on the switch which are uh, not electrified, so it's not really its fault. I mean, uh, it's got four wheels on the tender which are picking up power, but on the locomotive, it only has two wheel pickups. So uh, limited contact area, it's gonna struggle uh, with uh, things like that. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm very happy with how this locomotive turned out. It seems to be a very decent uh, little runner. And uh, yeah, just uh, cleaning all those contacts and giving it a little bit of oil seemed to have uh, brought it back to life, which is fantastic. It's riding the rails again for, uh, well, the first time in about 50 years. Yeah, it's still uh, struggling. The track might be a little dirty there, but uh, yeah, it's, it's doing all right. Just the uh, low speed out on it. I wouldn't expect anything too amazing out of it because it does have a three pull, but we'll see. Yeah, that's not bad. For a three-pole, that's pretty good, you know? Yeah, very impressed with that. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Adam, if you're watching this, thank you so much again for uh, sending this locomotive. It's very generous of you, and uh, very happy to see we were able to get it running once again. Anyways, with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.